unpack. We unpack. We unpack. Coming to your live box and ego unpack. Yeah. We unpack. We unpack. We unpack. Lomachenko Teofimo could collapse. It's in jeopardy over money. And we're going to talk about it. We unpacked. What up, Fight World? It's your boy, Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to my channel for the latest and greatest in boxing. If you want to become part of the gang, gang, notification, gang, please hit the bell icon. Shout out to the Super Chats, channel donations, the Venmo donations, the Cash App, and the Patreon family. We working. Now, head over to my Patreon. Link is in the description. You don't want to miss out. Or hit the join button to become a YouTube channel member. Now, we unpacked. I had to make this follow-up video because I made a video earlier about the Teofimo Lomachenko potential collapse. And it got people talking. People sent me messages. People left comments. And they said uh, a mixture of things. Some people agreed with my statements. Some people disagreed. So... Once again, I'm back at it like a crack addict. So we're going to talk about it. There were a few people who said, oh, I don't agree with you, Ego. You're tripping. Am I? Well, we're going to explore that very topic. Am I tripping? Um, it was my standpoint that Teofimo and his team or whoever, they're in the right. They got offered for the Lomachenko fight. Small numbers, right? They got offered one point two million dollars or whatnot and they're saying that's not good enough you know for a fight of this magnitude we expected that there could be a pay cut but we didn't expect a pay cut this colossal right and just for the sake of continuity let me bring up the espn article and i'll put it in the in the description even though i went over this in the last video but you know some people they disagree and i'm gonna i'm gonna just keep going in because Listen, what I noticed, I've been in this game for years and some people don't understand the business. Of course, we as fight fans want to see the best fight. You know, there's some people saying, oh, that's good money. Just take it. Um, you know, who cares? You'll win big money later. Man, I'm always going to be pro fighter and I don't agree with that. And the reason I don't agree, it, you know, it's multi layered why I'm saying that. OK, the article. Oh, here it is. It says, according to a report from The Athletic, Lopez balked at $1.25 million from top rank for the fight. And they were offering, you know, they were offering um, Lomachenko probably like three times the amount, you know, 3.75 or whatever. He was getting three something, you know, and according to Lopez, that wasn't, you know, significant enough for his team to take the fight you know they're looking at it like yo a fight of this level you know how is that the whole the whole pot right and i agree with that i definitely agree with that 1.25 million now listen you have to understand from there's there's different things there's a lot of people who are talking about civilian life you know what i mean if you're getting 1.25 million, it sounds good. Like if you won the lottery or something, you're like, oh man, 1.25 million. But for a boxer, you have to understand there's a difference. So like the average citizen would love to get 1.2 million, you know, 1.25 million, right? But to a fighter who's risking their lives in what they're supposed to be, you know, a big fighter, the biggest fight of their career, and generating millions for another company, then it, it becomes a different conversation, you know, especially with you risking your life. Errol Spence recently um, released a tweet and he had said something, made mention of, he says, I thought I was a man when I got my first hundred thousand until it was tax time. You have to understand taxes when you're getting a lump sum, like a fight purse, they could take like 40 percent. That's not including your trainer, you know, paying sparring partners, sometimes housing sparring partners, travel combinations, um, you know, nutrition, you have a personal chef and everything, 
things like that. You know what I mean? Um, here's a tweet. So we're all on the same page. T.O. Fimo was offered $1.2 million for October 3rd bout with Lomachenko. Sources tell The Athletic he's seeking far more and the fight's in jeopardy. Loma accepted a package in excess of $3.25 million. So my thing is, how does ESPN and just just so they some people said I was tripping, right? Right. We're going we're going to find we're going to find out how many homes is ESPN in. Right. Let's pull it up. ESPN is in as of September 2018. And I think this number has went up. But as of September 2018, ESPN as an entity owned by Disney is in 86 million homes. This is on, you know, most basic cable packages, you know, except for the, the baseline baseline, you'll probably have ESPN. Like, put it this way. If you go to a hotel, you usually don't have to ask the front desk if they have ESPN. It's usually included. Now, if it's more of a premium channel like HBO or Showtime, then there might be an extra charge or that hotel, depending on where you stay, may not have it. So this was as of September 2018, 86 million homes owned by Disney. How is a fight of this magnitude? And I got my trusted calculator, right? 3.25 plus 1.25. How is this fight, the valuation of this fight, $4.5 million between the two fighters, pandemic or not? And again, you guys can listen to whoever you want. I've been in the game for a while. So I'm going to give you guys some different perspective. There's a lot of people who talk about boxing and they don't know what they're talking about. So I want to cite some of my sources and, and let you know why I feel like for a company that has 90 million homes, that's in 90 million homes, you should be able to raise pandemic or not more money than that. First of all, Jorge Masvidal had issues with UFC's pay on the same network, you know, because UFC's on ESPN. And somehow in six days notice, they got him right and they paid their champion as well. Now we know UFC fighter pay is different, but my argument is simple. And I provided a couple of things. You look at the marketplace. Teofimo Lopez versus Lomachenko. I would buy that. I If it's on pay-per-view, sign me up. Some people are broke and, you know, they saying, oh, why should I have to pay pay-per-view? I don't do like that. I always support my sport. So if this is on pay-per-view, I will buy it to support the fight. It's not that serious. Right. Look at the current market. So I, I've provided some examples for you. The zone, which is a, a pri kind of a private app, not ESPN, which is in 90 million homes. KSI and Logan Paul had a rematch. Their first fight did good on pay-per-view, on YouTube pay-per-view. They had a rematch on DAZN. And according to the California State Athletic Commission, two YouTubers earned $90,000, which is 100000 shy of $1 million. So KSI, a YouTuber, and Logan Paul, another YouTuber, had a rematch. Their first fight was Amateur Rules. Teofimo is an amateur standout you know he has an amateur career he just is coming off his best win ever richard comey on espn's highest viewed telecast last year the terrence crawford meme machine card look it up and teofimo stole the show with the richard comey i believe it was a second round knockout how are you have youtubers in their very first pro fight making nine hundred thousand dollars right $900,000 a piece. Now, granted, this is on DAZN. So it's a whole different app. And this was before the pandemic, full disclosure. Now, you also see Devin Haney was on this card. Devin Haney fought an unheralded, unknown guy, right? Alfredo Santiago. Devin Haney got a $1 million guarantee for his fight against Alfredo Santiago and his opponent took 90,000 but they made sure the star on the zone Devin Haney was taken care of another American um on a on a card in America you had Billy Joe Saunders who got 750,000 guaranteed so that's what the zone was paying now you could argue that oh the zone 
had these inflated purses, but that's the reality. And that's not even including guys like Mikey Garcia, right? Mikey Garcia Vargas purse, right? And you guys could do the same research. Garcia Vargas purse. They just fought in February, right? They said Mikey Garcia made $7 million. Boom. You see that? <laughs> My, for a one fight deal on the zone, he got $7 million by himself. How did Mikey, how did the zone, which is a, a private company, you know, more so than ESPN, not in 90 million homes, front $7 million with no pay-per-view model, right? ESPN, they can always go pay-per-view if they want to. And they floated Mikey Garcia $7 million. His opponent, who wasn't even at welterweight, who had to drop back down to welterweight because he had been fighting at 150 plus, got $1.2 million. How does Jesse Vargas in that fight on the zone get what Teofimo was offered? $1.2 million. No difference. And you tell me that Teofimo is, you know, some people are saying he's ducking or he doesn't. You know, why is he get, why didn't he just take the money and all this stuff? Stop it. Stop it. That I mean, this is near undisputed. And the reason I say near is because the WBC kind of messed it up by offering uh, the franchise champion to Lomachenko. But this is this is close to an undisputed. They would still the winner of this fight would have to still fight Devin Haney to get that WBC title for real, because even if Teofimo beat Lomachenko, the franchise title as it sits is non-transferable so how did jesse vargas get what espn which is in 90 million homes offered teofimo for his biggest fight coming off a great sensational win and lomachenko is also getting three times <laughs> his purse and this is a company owned by disney right let's keep going now the great thing about youtube and the unpacked series and new media is I can always do like Roy Jones and say, y'all must have forgot and take you back in time. So this is a video that I did a long time ago, two years ago, you see? Vasil Lomachenko, history of difficult purses for his opponents. Rigondeaux, Salido, Walters. So I've already talked about this, about, <laughs> bro, Ego Stradamus strikes again. I made a video, as you guys can see, two years ago. Vasily Lomachenko's history of difficult purses for his opponents. And then I quoted Rigondeaux, Salido, Walters. Because all of those fights, you see that two years ago, I can't add videos and post datum, right? So this is a video I did two years ago. You see it. Lomachenko's history of purses. I made a video two years ago about this very subject. And people saying, Ego Veli, he, he, you're wrong, Ego. Okay, so I have a video called that. Let's keep it going. Should I keep it going? Okay, I'll keep it going. I did another video three years ago. Three years ago. Ego purses. And I started that. You see a lot of people on YouTube talking about purses. You know your boy started that. But I digress. Ego purses. Lomachenko got $1 million. And Nicholas Walters got stalled out. And he got 300000 less than he was offered in the first fight so there was this fight was supposed to happen um in the summer and then they couldn't agree to the purse so lomachenko you know he said something like since you can't get the money you want if you if if you beat me then i'll give you money out of my own purse and all this stuff because the number he was offered by top rank he didn't like it and we'll just listen into some of my video okay did it he came in lighter they both look good at the way in so we have we have a fight and i'm looking forward to it now now let's talk let's talk about the ego person very very shocking to me according to the nevada state athletic commission what was disclosed to them Vasil lomachenko is going to get a whopping one million dollars to face nicholas walters on the other side nicholas walters is getting a mere three hundred thousand for this particular mega fight now I don't, I don't get paid, paid off of 
whatever, whatever person, person they get. I'm not part of their team, so it doesn't affect me. The reason, reason this is shocking to me is because they were, they were negotiating this fight earlier this summer, and, and the offer was right around 500, 550,000 to Nicholas Walters, Walters, and him and his team decided, elected to pass up on that offer, saying that wasn't enough money. Vasil Lomachenko even went as far as saying, hey, if you, if you beat me, I'll give you a side bet. We'll do a little off the books side bet. If you beat, you beat me, I'll give you 300,000 of my own money, my own, my own purse, purse, and, and we'll, we'll apply it to your purse. And to me, to me that sounds kind of sketch. So I was like, I, I didn't, I agreed with Nicholas Walters not doing that. You want, you want for, sure, for sure money. You know what I mean? So there's that. Lomachenko fought Nicholas Walters. They had issues making the fight when it was supposed to happen. Then they stalled out Nicholas Walters, top rank, didn't give him no fights, and then he came back desperate, which is probably why he quit in the fight with Lomachenko, because his heart wasn't in it, you know? He had also gained weight, so he had a fat camp, but whatever. The bottom line is Lomachenko, in the Walters fight, he netted $1 million. There's Bob Aaron right there. $1 million, bro. And notice a pattern. Lomachenko having difficulty securing opponents which is exactly what i told you in that video two years ago but i don't want to get too far ahead of myself because this might be a two-part video the bottom line is this video was from 2016 you see that you hey son you see that november 25th 2016 and this was like a day before the fight or the day of the fight whatever it was lomachenko got one million dollars fast forward to the future how did Lomachenko fight Nicholas Walters, which Nicholas Walters was coming off a draw to Jason Sosa, right? Coming off a draw, failed negotiation with Lomachenko, had no in-between fights because top ranks stalled him out and then took money from him. Like they, the offer that they offered him in the summer, they took more money because he was supposed to get 550000 in the summer, but he didn't want that. So they gave him no fights, starved the man out. And then he he finally signed because, you know, he's in between paychecks and they gave him less money. They gave him like 300000 So I got multiple parts in different angles because people say uh, they say ego ain't sharp. He don't know what he's talking about. OK. For one. This seems to be a recurring issue with top rank and Lomachenko particularly right two how did Lomachenko in the Nicholas Walters fight which is not even as desired as this fight because Nicholas Walters he was a he's a good fighter but he didn't have the buzz like Teofimo right he didn't have a belt because he was coming off a draw right and he was off a long layoff because again he got stalled out so how did you have a million dollars for Lomachenko in that fight? But that's basically roughly what you're offering Teofimo. And please don't say because the pandemic, because I'm going to get to that in a second. So you've already had these issues where people are feeling lowballed before the pandemic even started. Because again, that video is from 2016. The other video I did was two years ago, right? So once again, let's tie this all together. Disney owns ESPN. They're in 90 million homes, basically, as of September 2018. They might be in 100 million by now. Who knows? You had difficulties making Orlando Salido and Lomachenko rematch. Lomachenko, Salido, low ball offer, right? Just to prove what I'm saying. Orlando Salido rejects. <laughs> so this is, you see this? See how quick I pull this up? A fight where Lomachenko should have rematched Salido to prove that he could beat him in that style. Orlando Salido rejects 720 offer. So this is more corroboration to what I've said. So Nicholas Walters, you know, he was offered 550,000 and he said it was Lobo. You know, he didn't he didn't like the offer. Salido said he didn't like the offer for the rematch, right? Wow, what a pattern. And this was all before the pandemic, except for the Teofimo joint, right? Um, Walters, Lowball, Offer, Loma, Offers. Because Loma offered to come out his own person. See? Nicholas Walters explains turning down career high offer. 
Lomachenko offers. So just to confirm everything that I'm saying is true. Nicholas Walters explains turning down a career high offer to face Vasil Lomachenko. Nicholas Walters gives his reason. It, it just wasn't enough money, according to Nicholas Walters. Lomachenko is one of the better opponents that we're going to fight, Walters told Ring TV on Tuesday. We asked for a certain amount. They said no. They said only 550000 was available for the fight. And I think fighting Lomachenko for five fifty with the tax we're going to pay from the government and everybody, we actually go home with nothing. We took the decision. We're not going to fight for that five fifty. Mm -mm -mm. you know what the odds are fighting a fighter like Lomachenko you're not going to beat him on a decision so you have to knock him out I fought Jason Sosa as I mentioned and I beat him clearly they said it was a draw they called it a draw what do you think it, if that was Lomachenko I would have a loss on my record you know what the odds are when you take the fight so the odds when taking a fight with Lomachenko you have to knock him out to win with taking that odds you need to pay me for that Right. And then this is where Lomachenko offered money out of his own purse to supplement Nicholas Walters, who wasn't happy with his pay scale. Right. Two face Lomachenko. Right. Vasil Lomachenko offers Nicholas Walters 300,000 of his purse if Walters can beat him. But again, going back to my video. So that was Nicholas Walters turning down 550,000 in the summer. The fight fell apart. Then when they came back to the table, top rank offered Walters even less. They offered him 300000 So how did it go from five fifty? You said you had five fifty in the summertime to give him. But then when this fight happened in November, you took that down to 300000 And fast forward to the future, and we know why this fight's not happening. So, you know, it's, it's just looking like a pattern here, you know? So we've already went over Devin Haney making a million dollars to fight an unknown guy with blonde hair. We, we talked about Billy Joe Saunders made 750000 on that same card. We talked about the two YouTubers, YouTubes, uh, KSI, and Logan Paul making 900000 That wasn't no undisputed fight or close to undisputed or unification. That was two YouTubers turning pro for the first time. We talked about Mikey Garcia getting $7 million to fight Jesse Vargas, a fight nobody asked for. That's what DAZN paid for. We talked about Jesse Vargas getting $1.2 million. Right. I could keep going. You know, Danny Garcia, there's an interview with him. Danny Garcia said he says top rank said they offered me three million dollars to fight. And he laughed at it. He said, I got that to fight Rod Salka. So these fighters are really getting smarter, y'all. They're getting they're getting smarter and they're not just accepting whatever purse is is offered to them. You see what I'm saying? They're not just going for the okie doke. And that's it's, it's a changing of the guard almost, you know. It's a it's a changing of the guard. This is Danny Garcia. Yeah. But <laughs> somebody told me you offered like three million, brought me three right. million to fight Ross Alga. Yeah. <laughs> right. Bob, Bob you said three million? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but somebody told me. So Danny's saying he got that type of money to fight Rod Salka, which is a fight that people laughed at him for. Right? So how does ESPN and top rank only have that amount for Teofimo pandemic or not? Now, let me let me continue by this. When it comes to this pandemic thing, a lot of people are going to say, oh, that's you can't count that because it wasn't the pandemic and all this and that. Right. Whatever. 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 They said ego don't know what he talking about. OK. Lomachenko just fought before he fought um, his very last fight in the UK. So his last US fight, Corolla, right? And let's look at that. Let's see if I can pull this up quick. Look, boom. And, and once again, Ego purses, you know who made that popular. Lomachenko versus Corolla. Loma is guaranteed over $3 million for ESPN Plus main event. This man, Lomachenko, fought Anthony Corolla at the Staples Center, right? 
it says he has a purse of 1.2 million to fight Corolla. But they said he was guaranteed 3.2 million. Let's pull it up for you. <laughs> Bro, this is too easy. This is ESPN when Dan Rayfield worked for him. Per the California State Athletic Commission, official contract purses for Friday night's top rank ESPN Plus. So the same network in L.A., Vasily Lomachenko, he gets 1.2 million, but his guarantee is about 3.2. So that means on paper they're saying 1.2, but you won't make anything short of your guarantee 3.2 million, even if they have to take a loss. So how did Lomachenko get purses like that? He got a million dollars from Nicholas Walters. Let's see what fight that was for Lomachenko. He only has 15 fights and a loss. So when he fought... <laughs> so the Nicholas Walters fight was... Let me click on Nicholas... All right. So when Nicholas Walters, his last fight ever, Lomachenko was six and one. So Lomachenko has seven fights. He was seven and no. And he was getting a purse of one million dollars within seven fights with six and one. So he has seven fights and a loss. And that's what, what his purse was. Teofimo just came off a great win and destroyed a champion. And you're telling me he he can only get a million dollars for a unification that everybody wants to see that you you could put on pay-per-view. Like I said in my last video, they must, must not be confident. This man has a record and he's lit. He's 15 and 0, 12 knockouts. He's doing these Fortnite dances and the Heisman dances, right? But Lomachenko can fight Corolla. Right? Lomachenko can fight Corolla and generate a purse of 3.2 million guarantee now again there's a lot of people that are going to use oh but ego we're in a pandemic i got you covered actually before i finish this last point a message from my affiliate So make sure you use that link. That's a message from my affiliate. Let's get it. Lomachenko, he fought Anthony Corolla, a UK fighter, in the Staples Center. They had to relocate the weigh-in because famed rapper, the late great neighborhood Nip, Nipsey Hussle, had passed away that weekend. And Nipsey Hussle, his funeral and memorial, took over the Staples Center. And there were more people at that than Lomachenko's fight, right? But... Nonetheless, let's let's keep unpacking so you guys know what's going on. They said once again, they said ego don't know. Right? Lomachenko Corolla attendance. Watch this. This was the announced attendance. 10,101. So I'm just going to round down just so it's a nice square number. 10,000. So he had, according to the official, and, and a lot of these numbers, sometimes that includes hot dog vendors and stuff like that, but whatever. Let's just say 10,000 people were at the Corolla fight where Lomachenko got 3.2 million on the same network just last year, as you guys see. 10,000 people. It says ESPN Plus top rank before a crowd of 10,101, right? Lomachenko got 3.2 million to knock out an unknown UK fighter. And back to it, you only have this amount, <laughs> 1.2 million for Teofimo. Now, again, some people would argue, oh, but wait, you know, he got 3.2 million, but that's because they had a crowd. Okay, they had a crowd of 10,000. So let me round down. I'm not the smartest brother in the world, but let's round down. 10,000 people, even though some of those people are workers, that they usually include in those numbers. 
they have like a live counter of how many people are supposed to be in the building. But whatever. Let's just say it was 10,000 seats and 10,000 paying patrons. I'll round down to 10,000. People are going to say, oh, the pandemic ego. So you had 10,000 people. Let's say they all pay for seats. Let's say they all paid $1,000, which is not every seat is going to be valued at $1,000. That means you would have a live gate of $10 million. See how easy this is? You just move a couple decimals. It's easy. 10,000 times 1,000, you would have a pot, a live gate of $10 million, right? To further my point, Canelo Alvarez, right? And that's that's saying every ticket was $1,000, which is ridiculous because if you're in nosebleed, you're not paying $1,000. And a fight like Corolla and Lomachenko, I, I guarantee you the tickets were affordable. Canelo, now he's a bigger star in general. He's a bigger star. And you guys see this from ESPN. Sergey Kovalev, when Canelo knocked him out in the 11th round, generated a live gate of 8.173 million. And that's off of 10,000 tickets sold. So, realistically, I, I, I gave a lot of wiggle room and a lot of cushion. Canelo Alvarez just fought in November before the pandemic with the crowd against Kovalev, and he's a bigger star, right? And he only did 8.1. And he fought Jacobs before that, just so you guys know, because you guys got a num no numbers. He, so he sold 15,000 tickets with Jacobs, and that fight, Live Gate, did 8.6 million. So for all the people saying that, oh, it's the pandemic, they don't have much. Now, I get that a live gate is adding to the pot, but the live gate is not going to be as much as some people are thinking. I think there's a lot of people who are out there and they think the live gate is going to be something crazy. Those are Canelo's last, his 2019 fights and his live gate, his live gate, right? is doing 8.6 million in the Jacob fight and 8.1, which is low for a Canelo fight, you know, comparatively speaking to Canelo versus Mayweather, Canelo versus, you know, Chavez Jr. or Cotto or something like that. And that's in Vegas. So the point I'm making is this. Canelo, his live gate is $8 million in, in 2019. How much do you think, even if there was no pandemic, how much do you think Teofimo and Lomachenko, which is a great fight, how much do you think a live gate would generate? You think it's going to generate more than Canelo versus Jacobs unification or Canelo versus Kovalev in Vegas? Probably not. So don't let people confuse you with this whole talk about, oh, it's the pandemic and, and we we losing so much money because yeah you i mean eight million dollars that's canelo anyway i don't think lomachenko versus uh teofimo is gonna probably likely top canelo's 2019 even if they had a crowd so yes it would add some money to the pot but it's not gonna add some ridiculous amount to the point where the fight shouldn't happen so i rest my case teofimo lomachenko needs to happen next they've been building it um, it's going to be a total momentum killer if this fight doesn't happen. Teofimo's coming off a great win over Richard Comey. Um, Lomachenko went in the UK. He's coming off of victories. The fight needs to happen, you know, but this seems to be a reoccurring theme with Vasily Lomachenko opponents as far as getting them situated with their purses, which is exactly why I made this video two years ago. Ego Veli style. Man, Ego Stradamus strikes again. So I feel Teofimo. I really do. I think, like, bro, look at your counterpart. See, and people think that people like Teofimo are tripping and Ryan Garcia is tripping. But who's really tripping, in my opinion, are the networks and the company. They're using this pandemic as a scapegoat to not make fight. How is Showtime making they fights? You know, if you don't have faith based on your branding over the last few years, if you don't have faith that your pay-per-view is sale, I mean, then that means you have to brand these fighters stronger. And instead of ESPN 
acting like Tyson Fury is the only fighter that matter in Lomachenko. Maybe they should have put more um, faith into it. And it's funny because old media, let them tell it. They say Lomachenko is a huge star. So why would you have fear that the pay-per-view will flop if Lomachenko is as big of a star and number one pound for pound and all the stuff that Bob Arum and everybody tries to beat in your head? They, Bob Arum called him and compared him to Muhammad Ali a thousand times. So if he's as big as you're saying, we should have a fight and you should be able to offer more than $4.5 million between the main event. And you have to also look at this. This is this spells trouble to me. You have to also look at the marketplace. Devin Haney's getting a million dollars on the zone and he, he, he didn't even fight a, a title fight in that fight. You know what I'm saying? He's fighting some, some dude named Santiago. So how, how is that fair for Teofimo, pandemic or not? Because like I said, I just showed you the numbers. Canelo, his live gate, these are low for his numbers, but it's still Canelo. He doing 8.17. Lomachenko hasn't showed no ability. That's why they never put him on pay-per-view. So even if that fight had a live gate, they're not. he's not going to pass Canelo's live gate numbers. So again, how much are we really talking about? Like, So you mean... Um, with no live gate, you know, that's probably, what is it, four or five million dollars maybe that this fight does? Because I know it's not going to topple Canelo's live gates, you know what I mean? So is that really a hang up? And, and out, out of all the stuff that the boxing fans have endured and, and stuff, I feel like these companies, they, they could throw us a bone and make the fight if they really wanted to. But nonetheless, you can't even say, again, I got a video talking about this very subject from two years ago so this ain't no just pandemic thing if it was a pandemic thing how i do a video talk about the same thing about lomachenko and salito lomachenko and walters you know lomachenko and rigandow that's another person rigandow got pennies so it's a reoccurring thing with top rank and especially with lomachenko and they're making sure he's taken care of he how's he get 3.2 million to fight corolla but pandemic or not you got one point two million for Tio Fimo and then fans are saying Tio Fimo needs to just take whatever that's not how it works because just like Nicholas Walters was saying if you don't knock him out and it's a close fight then that's a that's probably gonna be a guaranteed L for you just like fighting Canelo you know judges seem to be impressed by what Canelo always does or Lomachenko does so you're gonna have a hard time beating him on the scorecard you know I rest my case. <laughs> we working. But yeah, I keep doing your thing, Tio Fimo. It's going to be disappointing if a company backed by Disney can't get this fight over the line. You know, straight up. You know, and again, Lomachenko's getting million dollar purses to fight Nicholas Walters with six fights and a loss. With seven fights, he can get a million dollars. And Tio Fimo can't. So it sounds like top rank being cheap, to be honest. And that's because when Corolla, see, the thing is, when Corolla was opposite Lomachenko, Corolla only got like 300,000. Walters, he only got 300,000 in the end. You took money away from, from the summer negotiations where he was supposed to get 550. So that's what it's looking like. It's like top rank is trying to rob the bank. And if they, ha they, if they can't get both opponents for cheap, then the fight might not happen. You know, so even though it's a meaningful fight for boxing, it's meaningful for the division. If if both guys are in the M's, then the fight's not happening. But the bad sign with that is you look at the zone. They they've had. How did they give Jesse Vargas one point two million and Mikey seven? You know, you look at PBC, Danny Garcia. He got like two million dollars. Right. He got like two million dollars. And then um, Robert Guerrero got $1 million, right? Watch. I can pull this stuff up. This is too easy for me. Look, and this was years ago. This is three years ago. Danny Garcia got $2 million and Keith Thurman got $2 million. And they didn't even have all the belts like that. So you mean to tell me for a fight that seemingly is undisputed, top rank, pandemic or not, they can't come up with more money to appease the fighter to get it done? Right. Robert Guerrero, just so you guys know, and people, this is for the people that says ego's wrong and Tio Fimo is wrong. Right. Guerrero, comma guy. Look at this. 
Watch this. It is going to blow your mind. Robert Guerrero in 2014 with the Premier Boxing Champions. Robert Guerrero coming off of a Floyd Mayweather loss returned by getting $1 million. <laughs> Bro, that just sound crazy. Robert, listen to me. So you mean to tell me that boxing was more of a business and had more money in 2014 with fights like Robert Guerrero just because he lost and he was coming off a loss to Floyd Mayweather, man. He was coming off a loss and he got a million dollars. Look, he got a million dollars on Showtime to fight comma guy. But top rank only got 25,000, 250,000, excuse me, 250,000 more for Tio Fimo in a lightweight unification. Stop. Stop. And there's 90 million homes that ESPN is. This math ain't adding up. I rest my case. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more sports. Get unlimited access to premium content with an ESPN Plus subscription. ESPN Plus offers a variety of content, including specials, behind the scenes, docu-series like Bruce Lee's, B. Walter, and much more. With an ESPN Plus subscription, you get access to a ton of classic archive fights and replays from boxing and the UFC. Big names like, hi, I'm Mike Tyson, come and watch my fight, Floyd Mayweather, easy work. I'm rich and Manny Pacquiao. Uh, yes, it's up to my promoter. Do, 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 do. Just to name a few. If that's not enough, you could get the ESPN bundle, which includes ESPN Plus, Hulu, and Disney Plus. All three apps, one low price. You don't want to miss out. Make sure you guys click that link in the description box of all of my videos. Ego signing off. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button, and you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing. Mm -hmm.